Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about the concept of infinite limits. So uh, can a limit uh, have the value infinity or negative infinity? And it turns out that we will define some limits to be positive infinity or negative infinity, uh, whether or not positive infinity or negative infinity are actual values. They aren't actually numbers, it's more of an idea, but we're still going to assign some limits to equal infinity or negative infinity if they shoot off in that direction. So let me talk to you for a little bit about what do I mean by an infinite limit. So let's start with a graph. Uh, and this is just going to be a graph of a very common function. This is the function f of x is equal to 1 over x. Okay, and I could talk about several limits uh, on this function. I could talk about the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of the function f of x. And what I mean here is I'm taking the limit as x goes to 0. So as the x values get closer and closer to 0, where is the y value going? Well, if you don't count infinity to be a value, which technically it is not, then this isn't going anywhere. This function does not have a limit at 0. But we can talk about what is its behavior as x gets close to 0 from the right side. And the behavior is it gets really, really big, right? And it gets bigger than any value that I want. And when this happens, when it's get going off to infinity, then we say that the limit as x goes to 0 from the right of f of x is equal to infinity. Similarly, I could talk about the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x. And this would be, similarly, as I get closer and closer to 0 from the left side, we're going down to negative infinity, and I would get negative infinity. So <clears throat> where does this sort of thing happen? Where do I get limits uh, where I get values out of infinity or negative infinity? When I get values like that, I call these points at which I get those limits uh, vertical asymptotes. Okay, so really quick, let's write down a definition of a vertical asymptote. All right, so uh, let's look at this definition of vertical asymptote real quick. What it means for a line x equals a, so all vertical asymptotes have this form, x is equal to some constant a. It's a vertical asymptote of the graph of a function if one of two things are true. Either the limit as x goes to a from the right of f of x is plus or minus infinity, or the limit as x goes to a from the left of f of x is plus or minus infinity. So if we have a limit going up to infinity, or down to negative infinity at a point, then we say that that value x equals a is a vertical asymptote of that function. All right, so where do these things actually happen? Let me talk a little bit about that and then we'll get into some examples. Where this actually happens is, let's say we have a function f of x that's equal to, well, uh, let's say that I factor out my function. Let's say it has a top numerator, it has a denominator, and I have some stuff up here. Uh, I'm just going to write it this way for right now. Let's say I have an x minus a on top, and I have an x minus a times x minus b on bottom. Uh, would I be able to recognize right off the bat where this function has a vertical asymptote? Well, what you're really looking for when you're looking for vertical asymptotes, is there something that makes the bottom zero? Okay, and in this case, there are two things that make the bottom of this function zero. One of them is A, and one of them is B. But there's a difference between 
uh, x minus a and x minus b in this case, and that is what's happening on the top. And on the top, I also have an x minus a. All right, what does that tell me? Well, that tells me that in some sense, uh, other than at the point a, I could cancel these guys out. At, if x is equal to a, I can't cancel them out. So what's happening here? When I have a factor x minus a on top and x minus a on bottom, what's happening is there's a hole in the graph. So let me draw this real quick. And uh, let's say that b is right here, and let's say a is over here. Well, at b, I have a vertical asymptote, so I'm just going to draw that the function looks something like this. So I have a vertical asymptote at b. And at a, I also get division by 0. But all that's really happening at a is there's a hole at a. OK? And I, if I canceled the x minus a's, what that's really doing, remember I said it's not quite the same. Uh, to, I can't just go around crossing things out unless I know that a is not equal to 0. I'm sorry, that x is not equal to a in this case. If x is not equal to a, then I could cancel these. But I don't know if x is equal to a or not. Uh, what, what is happening in this case is there's just a hole at a. All right, so if there's a factor on top and on bottom that's causing the division by 0, it's just a hole in the graph. If there's a factor on the bottom that does not have a factor on the top to cancel it out, that is a vertical asymptote. So as we go through examples on that, keep, uh, keep that in mind, is that if the factor has a partner on top that cancels, that's a hole in the graph. If it does not, it's a vertical asymptote. And that's going to come in useful throughout this course to keep that in mind recognizing the difference between a hole in the graph and a vertical asymptote.